Hi, I'm Gerardi. And if you are watching this episode, you certainly want to learn more about Photon Bolt or make a multiplayer game. In this episode, we'll see uh, ownership, the concept of it in a Photon Bolt and the concept of a Bolt entity. For me, uh, my definition of a Bolt entity is pretty simple. It's a dynamic object synchronized over the network. That means it englobes players, objects that we throw like grenades, vehicles, goals like payloads or capture points, or even game controllers, uh, which handles points and other things like timers and etc. Uh, Photon Bolt defined the Bolt entity as a Unity game object that will be represented on the network by Photon Bolt in order to mark a game object as networked you need to use the bolt entity component by using this component you transform our ordinary unity prefab into a networked element allowing bolt to extract sync and manage its data it's also because of this component you are able to interact with the entity state modifying it to reflect the state on uh, your game. So let's go to the ownership concept. So a uh, Bolt Entity is neither uh, from a server or a client. It's a totally separated concept uh, or category and uh, this means that uh, it has its own rules. Ownership can be uh, on an object, on an entity, you can be an owner, if entity dot is owner is true you can be a controller if entity has control is true you can be a proxy if entity dot owner is false and entity dot has control is false or you can be owner and controller at the same time now i will show you an example which will help you certainly to understand the ownership uh, concept and the control concept of Photon Bolt. So let's start the simplified example of ownership. Uh, we are in true real life. What is true real life? It's a world in which uh, stigmas are uh, representing peers and other elements are representing Bolt entities. So here Let's see what we have. We have a peer. Uh, this peer can use magic. This magic is translated by bolt network dot instantiate call. When we call uh, bolt uh, network dot instantiate on a peer, we can spawn objects like cars. For example, here, these objects are bolt entities. Simply prefabs that have bolt entity attached on it. And you can see here that we are the owner of it because entity dot is owner equals true. And being an owner is not a changeable property. Uh, it's assigned to a peer with the bolt network dot instantiate call. And this peer is the only one where bolt entity dot is owner is equal to true. Ownership of an entity cannot be transferred to anyone else. The owner of an entity has absolute control over everything, like state, transform, etc. So this mainly means that here as the owner, we are capable of changing maybe the color of the car or the position of the car. So let's mark that uh, orange color equals his owner. Okay, that's it. And let's give him a little remote because he can change everything on this car. Simple as that. And let's now create a new peer, another peer. And this peer has no ownership and no control of this car. This means that it is a proxy peer of this entity. So now we can assign control to this peer via entity assign control other connection so here what we're gonna do is conserve the ownership of our car because it's not uh, transferable 
and we will uh, give the control to the other peer and this is translated by entity dot has control equals true this means that now the blue entity which has control can drive the car we can revoke the control of uh, this entity over this car and this means that now we don't change anything on the owner but the peer uh, that have the control of this car now no more have the control over this entity as an owner we can take control of an entity that we are owner of yeah that's great so this means that we can drive it we can drive it with the remote control but we can drive it physically and we mark down uh, that we are the owner and the controller of the entity by marking the peer as green we can release the control too so this means that we uh, change the has control uh, property of the entity to false and we lose control of the this car this means that now we can only control the car via a remote control so this is pretty much it now we're gonna see a practical example with a real architecture which is the dedicated server so let's start this uh, true real life uh, dedicated server edition uh, by some uh, statements on the left uh, we have the server the peer server with the crown uh, on the right we have clients so the clients peers uh, let's say that one of the uh, peers want to control a car okay so the peer will say to the server please give car and the server will say okay we'll spawn the car and will become the owner of this car and the peer will become the controller of this car so now we see the basic of how to uh, how it's working so now what if the current peer that have this car wants to use one of the function of the car that is to create wheels why not it will say to the car car create wheel and the car will tell uh, to the server that he need to spawn a wheel and server will create a wheel and of course in the dedicated server edition we will have uh, the server as the owner of the car uh, of the wheel and the car and the wheel will don't uh, will not have any controller because we can't control it so we don't need to use uh, the function uh, linked bind to the control uh, statement so yeah pretty simple and you apply this logic to every client that's it so yeah let's go to the more boring part of this video where we'll talk more about specific things about bold entities a little disclaimer before uh, going uh, further uh, you can leave object with bold entities in a scene and then load this scene via the network uh, this object will be called scene entities they are not recommended because they are not reliable uh, because uh, the scene load can fail or not work properly and they can cause to uh, not work properly in future so making uh, them spawn via the bolt network dot instant sheet uh, is better because you can control them more precisely so let's start now by talking to, uh, through the parameters of our bold entity component. Uh, so in prefab and state, we have the uh, type. It's a utility field which show the unity prefab type value on the current game object. The scene ID. It's a unique ID if this entity is a scene entity. Then uh, we have the ID. The ID is the uh, internal ID assigned to this prefab inside Bolt. This is always to zero for scene objects. Yeah. 
and we have this state. State, uh, it's a, a concept that we will see in the next episode. And before going to settings, let's talk first about uh, freezed object, freezed entities. Uh, an entity can be freezed, that means they will not replicate anything. Uh, so there will be no data sent on the network for this entity. So you need, bef um, before going through the settings, we need a little explanation about uh, packet sending and etc. So uh, in network, uh, we have a amount of um, data that we can send each frame. This means that if we want to send something, uh, we will need to pack it to a packet. And this packet will be sent through the network to everyone else in order to sync the data. And this is what is a packet. And this is a, a cycling send. So this means that we will send, uh, for example, 40 packets per second. Pretty simple. So now the replication rate. The replication rate control how often Bolt should try to send updates for this entity. This means that one is every packet send and two is every other packet send and three and etc and etc. So now we have the persistent field. If enable, Bolt should keep this object around uh, since between the loads with the Bolt network dot load scene. Always replicate. This field, if enable, lets the entity replicate the settings and the state even when there is a replication blocking process like loading scene or freeze. Proxy when freeze. If enable, bot will allow the entity to perform its first replication even if it's freezed. Detach on disable. If enable, this entity will detach from the network when it's disabled. Auto attach on load. Synth entities will be automatically attached on map load out of freeze frame. If larger than zero, this entity will automatically freeze by bolt for non-owners if it has not received a network update from the amount of frames specified. Controller predicted movement. Uh, it's a thing that we will see in uh, future episodes. Remove parent on detach. If enabled, this tells Bolt to search the entire transform hierarchy of the entity being detached for nested entities and set their transform parent to new. Along cleaned instantiate, uh, we will see this in the episode about instantiating and pulls and all the settings about query. It's a thing that is too advanced in order to explain this in this episode. So, the episode is finished. Thank you for watching. Next episode we will talk about states. I really hope that this episode helped you. If it helped you, leave a like, subscribe for more episodes, of course. Maybe check our Discord and etc. So yeah, have a good day. Remember to code every day and see you next time.